If you are thinking about traveling to Costa Rica or planning a trip to Costa Rica, then this video is here to help you plan, prepare, and know what to expect on your trip. and I normally post content about fitness, nutrition, and health, but I'm taking a little deviation in this video because my husband and I just recently traveled to Costa Rica. After returning and experiencing Costa Rica, I wanted to post my own video to share some little things that we experienced that were actually a little bit different than from things that we heard online. So just wanted to provide some other perspective to help you out on planning your trip. We went at the very end of July into the first week of August. So a few days of each month, which is basically kind of start of the rainy season there. So when we were checking the weather app beforehand, it said that it was going to be raining every single day and we were a little concerned. Luckily, the weather app was totally wrong. So don't trust that if you have that. When we got there, it was beautiful. We had almost all sunny days. A few days it sprinkled very lightly in the morning. And then there were a few days where there were some afternoon thunderstorms, but even those only lasted maybe 10, 15 minutes. And besides that, it was sunny, it was beautiful. We had a few days that were maybe a little bit overcast, but still warm. You could still go to the beach, swim, hike, do adventures, all those things. I would say based on our experience that that time of the year was actually a really great time to go. It's also not the peak season, which is more like December, January. So it wasn't packed with tourists or anything like that. We did travel kind of during this pandemic season. Um, so prices were probably a little bit cheaper because of that and there was probably fewer tourists. But one of the reasons that we chose to go to Costa Rica was that they had um, less travel restrictions. You basically just have to, upon returning, uh, provide a negative COVID test. So speaking of that, if you're planning to go anytime in the near future of watching this video and those restrictions are still in place, we actually found that it was very strict. Um, hand washing was um, basically a requirement. So outside of restaurants, outside of like national parks, hiking trails, hotels, those sorts of things, the airport, they have hand washing stations and they make sure that you wash your hands before you enter. So I would actually say that they're a little bit more strict than even the US has been. All right, some really basic info you should know from the time that you land. First of all, make sure that you have a cell phone service plan while you are traveling internationally. That probably seems obvious, but for some reason we totally blanked on that and we happen to have a cell phone provider that doesn't even do international service. So we couldn't even correct the problem once we got there. In any case, whether you have service or not, I would highly recommend using WhatsApp to do most of your communication. So Pretty much any like tour company, our hotel, all of those things use WhatsApp to communicate. So if you don't have that, make sure you install it before you go. It's incredibly helpful and convenient. And I actually use that in booking some tours when I was trying to get in contact with companies and ask questions and find out about things. We were able to communicate via WhatsApp um, and they pretty much all spoke English. So it was a really helpful tool to have for both planning the trip, but then also kind of helping in place of not having um, service to be able to call or to be able to text everyone. So just make sure that you have that ahead of time. Another thing to make sure when you're planning is if you're renting a car, we discovered, unfortunately, that car insurance is very expensive in Costa Rica. So in addition to renting your car and getting like your basic collision damage, they require you to have a third party insurance in case you're to hit anyone else. And that ended up costing us over $300 more just for that. So if you don't have that kind of budget, just know that if you see a car on you know some online website in the us you'll probably end up spending several hundred dollars more once you get to costa rica so maybe call around try and talk to people in costa rica ahead of time but definitely consider that, that you're probably going to have to purchase extra insurance that you're maybe not finding um, on us websites and that could end up costing you far more than you were expecting in that same vein 
I don't know that I would recommend renting a car while you're there. Of course, if you love adventure and you want to explore, it's a great thing to have. We did end up being able to go a lot of different places, do things on our own time and the way we want to do them by having our own car. However, the roads in Costa Rica are crazy. Um, some of the highways are totally fine, normal, um, but we had heard this ahead of time that you don't want to really drive at night, that the roads are bad, that drivers are crazy. Um, so that you really want to be careful about having a car. So we knew that going in and some of the roads were totally fine and we didn't really feel like the drivers were crazy. Um, but the, a lot of the roads are full of potholes, like full of potholes. Um, so you're kind of doing this like obstacle course, weaving through things. A lot of the roads are very small. You're trying to weave around potholes while um, like semi trucks are coming down the road and there's people walking on the street and dogs out in the middle of the street and cows on the street and things. So we found driving to be a very stressful experience in Costa Rica um, on certain roads, usually like not the main highway or freeway, but some of the smaller ones that get you there. Those created a lot of problems for us. We ended up feeling like maybe it wasn't the right choice to rent a car. It ended up being probably a little more adventure and stress than we were really looking for. Um, I know it, sometimes you don't really want to take tours and do everything with groups because it just, it feels a little less authentic. You can't do things on your own time schedule and those sorts of things. But looking back, um, we may have considered just booking things through tour groups, letting them take the stress of driving and planning and all of those things. I think that would have alleviated a bit of um, stress and just the way our time was consumed while we were there. So just something to consider if you're not huge on driving, you're nervous about roads. If you really want a laid back chill vacation and you're not looking for a lot of crazy adventure or going to a like unknown places. Another note about driving. If you are driving on your own, make sure that you use Waze, the Waze app and not Google Maps. Again, we heard this on a video and it was spot on advice. Um, we did use Google Maps once because Waze wasn't working, the internet wasn't quite correcting, and it took us down a very wrong road um, that led to a whole lot of drama that afternoon um, and just some major problems with the car. So definitely if you are there, do not depend on Google Maps. Don't take any little side roads. Um, stick to Waze and make sure you're always on a fairly big street and not going at down any like side dirt country roads. A little note about wildlife. One of the things that we heard was that, oh, there's monkeys everywhere and sloths everywhere and you're gonna see all kinds of wildlife. We thought we would just be seeing things everywhere. For us, that wasn't the case. I don't know if that changes with seasons, but we did end up seeing sloths, but that's because we went on two different tours to see them specifically. And then we did end up seeing monkeys at our hotel the very last day that we were there. But you really have to look hard for wildlife. So things that kind of hang out in the trees, they're actually not that easy to see. I read that you might want to take a tour guide if you really want to see unique things. And I would definitely agree with that. They are very good at finding things that we can't normally spot if we're not seeing those things. Um, we did manage to, on one of our hikes, kind of tag along behind a group and a tour guide. And because of that, we're able to see a snake and a tarantula and these frogs and um, caterpillars and crazy things that we would never have seen on our own. So if you are into that kind of thing and want to see that, then I would definitely suggest that if you're going on any tours or anything, you do go with a guide so they can point those things out to you. Also would probably want to consider staying pretty close to the destinations that you want to see. So we booked a hotel. We stayed at Dreams Las Marias in um, Juanacaste up in the north. And a lot of the big things to see and do are kind of more in the middle of the country, like a little bit closer to San Jose. So things like Monteverde, Arenal, um, the, you know, just rainforest, jungle, some of the sloth things, areas where you can see turtles, places you can go surfing. They're kind of spread all out, all around the country, either on the coast or right in the middle. And we were about three hours, two to three hours north of most of those things. So we booked it through Costco, got a great deal, but it put us in a very pretty area at a wonderful hotel. 
but far away from a lot of the things that we want to do. So we did have to take some full day trips to go see some of those things. We stayed overnight in an Airbnb one night, kind of in the middle, um, to be able to do more of those things. So, um, it's totally doable. It worked for us, but I think if we were to do it again, we would probably stay in a different part of the island so that we weren't traveling so far to see some of these things and we probably could have fit in a few more activities. Um, so just make sure before you book your hotel or your Airbnb that you decide on which activities you really wanna do. Find out what like the main areas that you want to, to stay in and to see things, and then try and book your hotel somewhere in that general vicinity. I would probably try and stay within about an hour of everything that you wanna do so that you're not spending so much vacation time driving. If you do book tours, either before you go or you stay at a uh, you know resort like we did where they have tour guides and different things like that that you can purchase, a little tip for you. So where we were at, there were a lot of um, kind of individual guys and companies who would hang out on the beach where it was public property and offer you their tour services. And the hotel offers tours too. What we found, or at least we're pretty sure is the case, is that we think that the hotel uses most of those same people. It seems like they basically all do the same thing, offer pretty much the same services, um, but they just charge different amounts. We book tours with a couple of people there and they basically just pass you off to someone who, you know, drives the boat or drives the ATVs or whatever it is. So the main guy on the beach selling you his services isn't even the one who does the stuff for you. Um, and I'm pretty sure the, the hotel uses basically the same guys for a lot of the same things. So I would just advise find something that has a pretty low price um, maybe has some good reviews on TripAdvisor. A lot of these people use TripAdvisor for their reviews. And you're probably gonna get about the same type of experience. In terms of money, costs, things like that, so we heard on quite a few videos before we went that Costa Rica is pretty expensive. Um, and I think in terms of Central America, South America is one of the more expensive countries, but we were anticipating very high prices, like as if we were going to Europe or something. We turned out to be surprised pleasantly that things were cheaper than we're used to in the US. Now we live in California, so it might be different if you were in like the Midwest and maybe prices are cheaper, but all of our meals that we ate outside of the hotel were cheaper than we would eat them in California. Um, we heard that like, um, Souvenirs and things like that were very expensive. For us, that wasn't the case. We went to a few souvenir shops and even at the hotel, none of the prices were exorbitant like we had heard that they probably would be. So for us, we actually found it to be a pretty affordable place to go. We also were pretty pleasantly surprised with how clean Costa Rica is. Um, from like gas station bathrooms <laughs> to the airport to parks and things like that. Um, everything, at least that we saw, was kept very sanitary, very clean. Again, even with COVID, they had pretty strict rules, but we just didn't see a lot of some of the gross stuff that you see in like bathrooms around the US um, or in other places traveling. And it just, it seemed to be, there wasn't a lot of litter, there wasn't a lot of trash. Things just seemed to be very well kept and very well clean. If you're someone who loves trying new foods and is a foodie and loves that experience, I'm not sure based on our short experience there that Costa Rica is gonna be the most exciting place for you in terms of food. Um, we ate most of our meals at our hotel. It wasn't all inclusive. So we did a lot of meals there. Um, nothing special, it's just international cuisine. But we did eat some meals in different towns and places that we stayed and when we were driving. Um, and we had one meal in particular that was very good. It was actually part of a tour um, where at the end of the tour, they took us to a organic farm where it was kind of this homemade meal and it was amazing. Aside from that, however, anywhere that we went, we stopped at one small um, soda, like kind of like a cafe that had pr pretty good food. Um, but everything else that we had for us was very bland, was not super well cooked, just very basic. Like there didn't seem to be a lot of like Costa Rican food. It was just kind of your typical Spanish 
fare like rice and beans and chicken and steak. We met also a man on the airplane who moved to Costa Rica several years ago and he also said he has not had great experiences with the food. Um, I did some research ahead of time looking at videos and seeing what people were eating and there just didn't seem to be a lot of variety. Fruit is a big one and then like gallo pinto which is kind of the main breakfast food which is rice beans and egg or meat. Um, but aside from that we didn't really find it to be that great of a food experience. Another tip is to take bug spray. There's um, definitely a lot of mosquitoes there, a lot of bugs. Luckily, at our hotel, at least at this time of the year, we actually really didn't have many problems with things like mosquitoes. Um, but more inland, when we went on some tours, specifically this one soth tour, I don't know what it was about the land, but there were tons of mosquitoes. If you are someone who's prone to getting bit by mosquitoes, then definitely make sure that you have bug repellent with you. In my personal opinion, Costa Rica is great if you are like an outdoor, active, love being in nature kind of person. I didn't do extensive research trying to find cultural activities and historical landmarks and things like that. I know there are some, but I think primarily it's a country that's about hiking, it's about hanging bridges in the rainforest, it's about volcanoes, uh, it's about surfing, it's about seeing wildlife and really being out in nature, going to the beach, doing water sports, things like that. I would say it's great if you're an adventurous type of person. We did whitewater rafting, we did zip lining, which is kind of the big, one of the big things that uh, Costa Rica is known for. So it's a really good adventure spot. It's a very good outdoor spot. Um, but if you don't love being outdoors, hiking, doing trails, things like that, I don't know if I would recommend it for someone who's looking for more of a like walk around the city and experience history and museums and that type of thing. I just, I don't think there's quite as much that it has to offer. Now we didn't go to San Jose, so I can't speak for that. That's really the main city and I don't know what that's like, but if you're staying outside of that area, it's really a outdoor lover's paradise. So those are all my main tips to help make your trip planning a little bit easier. Um, I could probably share much more, but if you have questions about specific things we did or any other little tips or wondering anything else about the country, um, go ahead and leave comments down below and I will answer them as best I can. So thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you did like it and it was helpful, then please go ahead and hit that like button. And if you would like more information on fitness, health, or nutrition, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more of those videos. Take care and happy travels.